Well, hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. I am here on my laptop on the bench, and today we're going to dive into some data and see what's real, see what's not, and see if we can learn something from it. So the first thing I want to show you guys is a power chart that I put together. <laughs> um, really what I want to show you guys today is <clears throat> the difference between selecting just props. Okay. So recently I, uh, I have flown the, the Piper Tri-Pacer and I'm flying it on a monster power motor uh, or monster motor um, from uh, flight test and it's flying on a 16.8 prop on six cells. Okay. So what does that really mean? Well, it's an 86 inch wingspan airplane, um, but I also have a 60 inch aerobatic airplane that flies on literally the exact same power system. So how do I sort of distinguish? Well, yes, this, this uh, uh, motor setup is gonna be suitable for this plane or this plane. Uh, really, it kind of comes down to experience, but I'll help you get some context for what that experience means. So let's dive into this. So looking at these numbers here, we've got a power chart overlay of the entire flight of the Tri-Pacer, as well as the MXS that I mentioned before. Again, these are the same motor, the same battery, the same... Uh, size prop but the difference is the style of the prop so you've got a master air screw classic a master air screw k series a master air screw wood and an apc electric prop now why would i consider using regular propellers that are not designed for electric on an electric airplane well the, there there are a couple of reasons uh <laughs> Uh, number number one being um, noise. Oddly enough, um, when you take a gas airplane prop and you run it on an electric motor, the sound that you get from that, it, it sounds very real. <laughs> um, so, so some props are, are a little bit different than others. The Master Airscrew Classic prop is probably my favorite. Uh, it has a fantastic sound. It just when you really overpower that prop, it just rips the air apart. The other cool thing about that is that it's really attention getting, and as you go by, you know it echoes and reverberates, and you know you can really put on a great show by overpowering that prop. The downside is that it's really not that efficient. So, how do you balance that? Does efficiency matter? Well, let's dig a little bit more. Going into the Master Airscrew K series, the K series prop, um, you know, it's it's one of those props that's supposed to be a little bit more efficient. But how much does that really matter? Again, this prop sounds quite nice, but I did find that it behaved a lot better uh, flying aerobatics than the classic prop. Now, the classic prop, to be fair, is designed for like warbirds and things like that. You're not necessarily going to be doing all sorts of weird uh, uh, aerobatics with it. Uh, I I was doing loops, I was doing hammerheads, uh, uh, humpty bumps, um, uh, inverted, or, or sorry, reverse cubinates, cubinates, uh, I mean it's all sorts of just basic aerobatic stuff and the K series did have to see, have seemingly better control over that. Now stepping down to the master air screw wood, uh, the master air screw wood had very similar performance to the K series but it was a little bit quieter and I kind of liked that um, just because I'm you know when when you're flying these aerobatic planes you're flying them full throttle for you know these big blurps and I, I kind of like to do my aerobatics quietly when I'm flying on my electric so that's why I did that and it also had a little bit better control with uh, hammerheads on this particular airplane, the hammerheads were much easier to do. 
uh, with the master air screw wood. And my down lines uh, were a little bit more controlled too. Uh, I am using a BL Heli 32 firmware base, which allows me to have uh, non-damp mode activated, which sort of acts like a brake on the prop, which help, does help to slow my down line. Uh, it's not quite as free falling which is nice. It, it behaves more like one of the gas planes that the throttle is more regulated by the gas engine running. Last is the APCE prop, which I had been previously flying on this airplane almost exclusively. Pretty much a standard go-to for most electric pilots. Um, so how did they fare? Really what we're looking at is this table. Um, we've got our maximum amps, our maximum power, which is amps times volts and our maximum RPM. Now all of this again is coming from my BL Heli 32 firmware which was logged and then I exported that data. This is the TriPacer data. Um, and then I, the only manipulations that I did was I added this column where I created a, a time for the time of flight from the time that it was activated uh, just so that we could graph these things and have them overlaid nicely. Uh, as our x-axis and then for our y-axis I went ahead and did power which is the watts uh, which is amps times volts and as you can see G3 times H3 G3 times H3 so that's gonna continue all the way down um, so that's that's how you calculate that and so that those are the only manipulations that I've done uh, so that I could get those numbers that are a little bit more baseline now going back to here, really what we're looking at is uh, a performance metric along with some sort of reference, okay? So with APC prop, I was pretty much on average running around 10,000, 10,500 RPM, somewhere in that range, uh, all, when it's wide open. Now, this number does not necessarily not necessarily correlate with this number. This does not mean that when I was at max power I had max RPM. This does not mean when I was at max RPM I had max power. It also doesn't mean when I was at max amps I had max power or max amps giving me max RPM. When you look at the data for example let's go to the APC and see where our max power was. All right, so we're looking right here at the beginning of our flight. There is our 2276 data point. Uh, I did use rounding on this tab, so there we go. Um, so our, look at our max RPM, 9966. That is not our max RPM here. And our current at this particular location was... 98.3 with our volts at 23.15 so 98.3 very well may have been however when we go back to this data you've got 98 98 and then immediate look how look how briefly this is okay so you've got a difference of half a second here so this is one second one and a half seconds of nearly 100 amps. So two, four, four seconds. Okay, this is not much time at all to be bursting at that amount of, of power. But again, you're flirting in the same area of RPM. So again, this is giving you reference and you're going from 24 volts just before and then you're sagging down to 22 and a half, but you're drawing a lot more current. So again, you're going from, you know, uh, 24 so you're going from 900 watts all the way up to 2200 watts in just a few seconds so again again this is just to give you some context and help you have some understanding of what's going on here now when we look back at this really what I want to do is show okay so this is the performance of the airplane one airplane with the same power system as a separate airplane. So why would I feel confident that this particular power setup would work? Okay, so 
it's kind of the the rule of watts per pound okay so generally speaking a, a scale airplane will fly somewhere around 100 to 125 watts per pound uh, a trainer will fly somewhere around 150 and aerobatics will be above 150 watts per pound this is just spitting off the top of my head some people have different numbers it's all pretty much around the same ballpark anyway with that in mind, understanding how much the tri-pacer approximately weighs, about 15 pounds, I actually haven't ever weighed it. Uh, but figuring the size and the weight, again, this experience, about 15 pounds, and we're dealing with somewhere around 2,000 watts, 2,200 watts, 2,500 watts. Let's say 2,200 is a nice middle ground maximum for this setup. So watts per pound, so 2,200 over 15, 2,200 divided by 15 is 150 watts per pound. So I knew it was a nice round number. So from there, I was like, okay, well, this, this will work, this will be safe, which prop should I use? Now, to be fair, Master Airscrew did supply me with uh, several of these props for, for putting on the TriPacer project, but I had to select which one. Pretty much I knew what I wanted from the get-go. Um, I wanted the wood prop primarily because uh, less rotational inertia. So an airplane weighs something, right? <laughs> rotational inertia is the amount of energy it takes to spin something, right? Uh, so a lot of a lot of car uh, like drag racers and things like that they they take this into account because it takes energy to get that wheel turning uh, when you're racing. Same thing applies with the propeller. The heavier the propeller, the more energy you're going to have to use to get that inertia going and maintain that inertia. So the maintaining the inertia and the getting it going part are so let's think about this. This is going to be on the tri-pacer. You're going to get the inertia going once. Maybe a few times. If you're doing touch and goes. Okay? It's not like it's going to be on and off all the time like it is with the aerobatic plane. Now let's look at maintaining that. I let, Let's look at the graph. Let's look at the graph. Because you can see how most of the blue line, the power consumption, is somewhere right around the middle. Yes, I did adjust a little bit because that's the way that I fly. If I am going with the wind, I generally uh, have the throttle on a little bit more than when I'm going against it. Uh, just so that I'm nice and stable when I go to turn. Uh, it's the whole stall thing. Kind of important sometimes. So with that said, uh, you know, look, looking at this graph, you know, there's a there's a dead spot down here where I was at the end of the field turning the airplane back over, and then this is the taxi back. So you see a little spike here where I'm throttling up to get the airplane moving and then maintaining back to the pit area here. Okay, so that tells the story. Again, maintaining flight is something that it, it depends on the airplane, right? So I mean, if you look at the graph for, say, the APC electric prop, you can see that maintaining that prop, again, the, the average middle ground is right about the same place as the blue line. We're looking at the green and the blue line. And then looking at the red line, it's about, again, about the same. It's about the same. With that being said, <laughs> We can go back to our, our, our chart here and say, okay, well, your max amps when you flew the tri-pacer was at 71. Your max power was 1,600 watts and your RPM was at 9,500. Well, yeah, because I don't think I ever got to full throttle when I th flew the tri-pacer. I didn't need to. Uh, I didn't need to go vertical. Um because it was a maiden flight, number one. And number two, the airplane isn't designed to be flown that way. 
So a lot of the sayings that, you know, you have to buy this size motor for this size airplane, I've never bought into that. And someone says, oh, you, you fly that airplane only on six cells? You know, it's a quarter scale airplane. Shouldn't you be flying it on eight or ten? No, not necessarily. I think that there is some misconception that you have to have a certain number of cells to fly a certain kind of airplane or a certain size airplane. And you just don't. It's really about power to weight and how the airplane is going to be flown. Now that being said, there are certainly going to be exceptions to the rule. But I will say that there is not a whole lot of difference between these different props. Uh, directly comparing the master air screw props themselves, you know, you're all talking about the same general RPM uh, except for the master air screw K. I've never seen this airplane hit 11,000 RPM. Something about the K series prop, a little bit cleaner. I suspect it has to do with the uh, blade profile. Uh, looks to be a little semi-symmetrical. Uh, something about that allowed it to spin a little bit faster. Uh, the noise is quite nice. Um, and it, it has a very sporty kind of sound, almost like a Red Bull Air Racing kind of sound. And at 11,000 RPM, it's it's a little bit high in pitch, but it sounds good. It's, it's very healthy. It's not quite the uh, roaring kind of sound that the Master Air Screw Classic has. Now, my understanding is that the Master Air Screw K series is supposed to be a little bit more efficient. So efficient is kind of a relative term. Efficient in terms of use of air. Uh, use of power uh, so you kind of have to have a context for that in any way you slice it if you've got a diameter and a pitch any other adjustments that you make to that they're gonna be pretty minimal but you also have to remember that all of that sound that you're making off of these propellers that is loss of efficiency uh, I mean, the, honestly, the if I were to pick any of the three Master Air Screw props, um, you know, based off of the, no, the numbers alone, I would never choose the wood prop. It consumed the most amount of amps, and it consumed the most amount of power, even though the RPM was the lowest. So you'd think, well, shoot, that would be horribly efficient if you turn into max RPM per power. Again, this is not the max RPM at that maximum power. So that's kind of a moot point. What I'm saying is that you can't always say definitively, this is the prop I have to have. What you have to do is have experience. Try different props. It's worth the investment. I've tried so many different props. I've tried the Master Air Screw electric props. I've tried Zor props. I've tried Zinger props, Top Flight. Um, um, uh, Falcon. Uh, you know, there, there are different style of prop in the same size. There's a Sabre style. There's a World War I style. There's, you know, Top Flight PowerPoint. There's so many different styles of blades that can have a dramatic influence on how they fly too. It's not just about the sound. It's not just about the performance. It's how the airplane feels. Again, I had been flying the MXS for a long time using the APC electric prop. But when I put the wood prop on there, I was able to do things easier just by switching a prop. This makes sense, right? because you've got a different size hub, you've got different width of blades, you've got different rotation, rotational mass, you've got so many different factors that are sort of playing in your favor. You've got the, the additional surface area, right, compared to the APC prop, but you don't have the mass of, say, the, the Master Air Screw Classic or the K-Series. All right, so with all of this information, what does it mean for you? What it means for you is, number one, never discredit 
a propeller that's designed for a gas airplane. Number two, don't necessarily believe all the hype that because you're flying an electric airplane, you have to fly with an electric prop or that with a particular airplane, you have to fly with a specific number of cells. How you get to your power numbers doesn't really matter. As long as your motor can handle that power and as long as the prop is handling the plane just fine. There are situations where I have flown World War I style airplanes with a motor that looks really small, but I run it with a big propeller on a low cell count because it works. It produces the amount of power that I need for the airplane and it has a thrust ratio that is nice. So a 12.8 is a little bit of a hot prop. Uh, the prop that I flew on that World War I airplane was a 16.6. So I've got lots of thrust, not necessarily a whole lot of speed, which is what you want on a World War I era airplane. So be smart about your decisions, but get a baseline. Get a baseline and then try something different. You will be surprised and how something may fly a little bit better, a little bit different by changing out your prop. Master Air Screw has been a very big supplier of propellers in our hobby for many, many years. And I highly encourage you to check out their selection and to choose what may be best for your particular project. They're made in the USA, they're good quality, and let me tell you, they're plastic props, they're glass fiber, props are, I mean, they're practically indestructible. Um, I, I've seen them chip the tip of a blade and keep on running and not have a prop let go. <laughs> um, but I, I will also say that there are other options out there too to consider, but it's a good place to start. Thanks so much for stopping by my workshop today. If you want to check out what I'm doing in my latest projects, be sure to check out my Instagram account where I am frequently uploading pictures and videos of things that I'm doing here in my shop between videos. If you have any questions, feel free to send them my way. I'm always happy to lend help to a friend. And until next time, continue to pa properly power your flying work of art.